Hey everyone, it is September 3rd. Right now I'm just getting over, I've had a cold for about the last week or so. It's almost done yet, or it's almost over with. So uh, so my voice sounds just a little bit different than normal, but we'll just have to deal with it. Uh, this one I'm going to do two uh, videos this weekend, maybe even three. The first one that I'm going to do, which is where I'm heading to right now, is uh, I don't know how much everybody has heard about this, but Starlink is a internet service coming from its satellites, but it's low earth orbit. So it's really low latency, really high bandwidth. That's the goal anyway. So, uh, but right now they're just rolling it out. There's not enough satellites to, to basically accommodate everybody that needs it. So right now, and for, for me as well, now I ended up getting it, but I agreed to what they call best effort. And what the best effort is, and I'm sure that some some other people that are on the wait list in my area probably got the same email. What the best effort is, is you get last priority for bandwidth. So I bought the dish, you know, for 500 and some odd dollars. And um, so what they do is they give it to you and they're like, and they tell you right away, like, look, the peak is between five and 10 o'clock every day. So during the peak, you're probably going to get some bad speeds. However, if people have just garbage internet to begin with well at least you'll have something it may not be great but at least you'll have something um and i'm going to do later on i'm going to do posts uh, uh i'm going to do a post i'm going to do a bunch of speed tests and everything so people can see but that's why i'm on right now is what they call best effort it seems to be doing pretty good so far it has it has its moments like nine o'clock eight thirty nine o'clock at night yeah it's going to be pretty slow but pretty slow is still pretty much right about what I have right now with AT&T because I have a six megabit connection with AT&T and uh, this on the low end I have seen it down as low as two during peak times but on non-peak times I've seen it 160 180 something like that uh, megabits per second so I mean that's way more than what what I need so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shut off this video. I'm going to flip, flip the camera around and we're going to go up on the roof here and take a look at the Starlink satellite dish. So here we go. All right, so there is the Starlink dish right now. Now, just so everybody gets frame of reference, the house sits kind of at an angle. So this is not north. North is actually pretty much straight this way. So we're sitting at, you know, 20 degrees or something like that. A 20 degree angle so and for anybody that's looking at starlink it's not the southern sky southern sky is for direct tv so it's not the southern sky that you need a clear view of which why would it be because i have a clear view of the southern sky no we need a clear view of the northern sky well that's not too bad so we're i'm gonna come right back here this is what the starlink the new starlinks are rectangular the first ones are circular these are rectangular and uh so right now it's pretty much, so it has motors. Let me show you here. You can't see anything. Right inside there, there's motors. It moves it around in a couple different axes of direction. So it'll take an actually, you know, spin like this and, you know, up and down all the time. You can see it moving. And so right here, right now the camera is pointed pretty much due north, which is right in line with the satellite. So that's actually pretty much due north. I'm on uh, Manor Road, if anybody from the local area is looking here. So uh, these trees are just barely out of the way. This is about the only place that I could mount this because anywhere else, there'd be some other tree somewhere else that was uh, interfering with it. So I mounted it right here and it's looking up into the northern sky right now. And like I said, this thing moves all the time. Not, not tons, but you can see it moving a lot like when you first get it it's in a completely different orientation and then i also got if anybody was wondering if they're looking at getting one this is just a normal they call this uh just a roof pivot mount is all it is and you just loosen this to adjust the angle up and down and uh, then tighten it back down but it's real simple lagged you have to find the uh the rafters running through underneath and then you just lag directly to the rafters just uh screwing into the sheeting isn't enough uh, the thing will be able to uh, pull out. So, and then the cable, and I don't have it permanently mounted, don't judge me, but the cable comes down here around the corner and then just kind of hugs the edge of the, which I don't like that. There we go. And kind of hugs the edge and like I said, and they send stuff to permanently mount all this too. 
So, but I just don't have it done yet. And Sapphire isn't, here's something, but she doesn't really, isn't really aware that I'm up here, I don't think, even though she can hear me just fine. But anyway, it drops down over the edge and then I have it going into the bedroom, which is where I have the actual uh, router itself. So if I'm standing directly north, yeah, so I'm standing directly north. But anyway, here's what it is right now. That little rectangular dish. And also the uh, on the app, the Starlink app that is, um, use the tool to check for obstructions because you don't want to get it. And then like, oh, well, I have to drop a whole bunch of trees and I didn't want to do that. And I didn't realize I had to do that. No, it has a huge range that you need to... Um, like a huge area of the sky that has to be visible because it is moving satellite. You know, these satellites come, you know, come into your area and leave your area all the time. These aren't geosynchronous where they just stay in one spot up above. So once you get your satellite set up, it's all good and it never moves. It's not the way this works. These come in and out all the time from different directions. So this thing has to move and you have to have a huge chunk of the sky that's open. So just be aware of that. They have a nice tool uh, on the Starlink app itself that, uh, will actually check for obstructions in the sky uh, for you. You just basically put your phone down, you move it all around, and you know, while it's facing up to the sky and it looks for trees or anything else. So, uh, that's the satellite part of it. This cable that you just saw me that was just running down there, that cable is a special cable. It's not something you can buy anywhere. You have to buy it from Starlink. It's like a, a cross between USB micro and USB C, is kind of what it looks like to me. Um, but it's a custom one. You can't buy it anywhere else. So be really careful with it. Don't break it. So uh, anyway, the couple cable runs down to the router that's down in the bedroom right now. I'm going to go ahead and go down there and show you the router. It's very, very simple. It looks very simple, but it has extremely good range uh, from my testing that I've done so far. Uh, like uh, indoors, probably about 80 feet. Uh, outdoors, you know, who knows, a couple hundred feet maybe, but it's a very good amount. So we're going to go down and take a look at that real quick. And then we're going to do some speed tests and see how the speed tests work. All right, we are back inside now. And this is all the Starlink is right here. The Starlink, this is a router and it's also the power supply. So if you look on the bottom here, the plug on the right, that is your power. The plug on the left is the one that actually goes out to, uh, to the satellite dish up top. And my ugly hole that I drilled there, don't really care. I'm going to get it fixed. Uh, there's no lights on this thing. You, you saw that one light on the bottom? That's it. There's no lights on it. None of these are lights here. There's nothing on this side. There's nothing on... Well, I got the wall there. Nothing on this side. Nothing on the top. No on. No off. No power. No anything. Just about as simple as you get. And by the way, if you... The first ones of these, you could get with Ethernet cables on them. Or Ethernet ports on them, sorry. So that way you could actually plug in a hardwired connection. Yeah, no more. It's wireless only. Uh, and there's no option to buy anything else right now. So this is what we have. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some, it is like getting close to eight o'clock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some, uh, some speed tests. And this is going to be about the highest eight o'clock at night is the worst time. So what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to do three of them is going to be about the worst that there is. And it only gets better from this. The worst time is eight it gets better at nine, but on the weekends, it takes until about 10 30, 11 o'clock at night before it really speeds up. But during the week, they say the prime time is over about nine, but you don't start getting noticeably better speeds consistently until about 10 o'clock or so. So, we're going to go ahead and do some of those uh, speed tests right now, and uh, just so everybody can kind of see what it is that what you will actually expect. All right, and what I'm using here is I'm using, it's just speed test, it's just an app here. If you look here, yeah, speed test, that's all it is. And so what I'm going to do is, and I'm right by the router, I'm five feet away from the router, so that won't, so any latency there won't have any, uh, won't affect it at all. So I'm going to hit, by the way, I'm just northwest of uh, Atlanta. And so you see, okay, so the ping was 105 milliseconds. Oh, we're doing really good, because this is Saturday night. At 8 o'clock, 8.03. Okay, this is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. 27.9 megabits download. 
and the upload is so much better than, I mean, the upload speed for AT&T is something like 0.1 megabits per second. So even if it is only two, that's still 20 times better. There we go. So we did 27.9 megabits download and a 2.06 megabits upload. So I'm going to X out of that. We're going to do three of them and we're going to do it again. That was a ping was 105 milliseconds. So this one ping is a lot lower. So that means the satellite's a lot closer now. But with satellite being a lot closer, what that means is now people from Atlanta are probably on this one too. So there's going to be a lot more traffic on it. But I mean, even then, I'm still not disappointed with this. 11 megabits, that's enough to stream ultra high def, couple ultra high def movies at the same time. Can't do that on our uh, AT&T right now. That's only six megabit connection. And look at, look at that upload speed. That's pretty good. How the upload speed is basically, yeah, almost identical to what the download speed is. That's great. So uploading this video later tonight will be easy. And we're going to do it one more time. And, ooh, look at that. That is bad. 217 millisecond. That means we're right at the edge of the satellite uh, range right now. Our speed's okay. This is already doing a lot better than I th than it has been. Wow, not bad. Almost 70. Upload. I've seen upload as high as about 40, but normally it runs around 5, 5 to 10. Which, like Blake said, that's still way better. All right. Well, there you have it. So this one, the ping was even really bad. With 217, when I say really bad, 217 is still not terrible. Like, you can still stream off of it and everything else. Gaming would be kind of laggy. Um but not terrible. It just depends on what you're looking to do with it. Um, like you said, gaming, uh, the latency is, a, is kind of a big problem. But as you can see, you know, 8 o'clock on a Saturday night here on, it's Labor Day weekend. So, but I mean, we, we had some pretty good speeds uh, on there. More than enough. Now, like I said earlier, this is the best effort option that I selected. Now, with the best effort, you can pause it at any time. So if I would have gotten the satellite dish and got it hooked up, and I'm like, you know what, it's just not doing very well, then I could actually pause it, and, you know, basically pause the service until it gets better. Now, remember, uh, Starlink is still adding satellites all the time. They're launching, two to, they have two to three launches a month, and they've been putting, on average, right around 50 satellites per launch, uh, so anywhere between 100 and 150. Now, if anybody that follows it, which I do, because I'm kind of a fan, um, they're getting ready to launch their Starship uh, for the first time. And once they get the Starship transporter up and they start running, which won't be until next year, and probably next year, uh, then they go up to being able to launch 400 at a time. And now you're doing 400 every couple of weeks. So, um, and you can really tell with this, sometimes when it's really fast speed, it's because there's like three satellites within range or four satellites within range of my uh, of my dish. Well, now you have tons of bandwidth because you have four satellites. And if it's later at night, especially, it's no problem. Um, but the, but you, I can see it also when a satellite's coming into range, it comes into range for me first before it comes into range of Atlanta. And so for a while there, it'll be like right at the edge as far as so the latency will be high like 200 milliseconds and really fast speed like 160 180 200 and then i'll do another speed test 20 seconds later where it's now come into range of atlanta and now everybody from atlanta is connecting to that satellite and it's like five or four or something like that which is still not bad as far as you can still stream a movie it's not going to be ultra high def but um but you can still stream it. And we're, like I said, we're getting more and more satellites all the time. Um, I'm happy with it right now uh, because just not having any issues with it. Uh, my download speeds and upload speeds are a lot faster. And I mean, this AT&T is $70 a month for six megabit connection. So, you know, Starlink, okay, it's $110 a month, but it's for, you know, potentially 20, you know, I've seen it as high as 30 times faster. So, you know, okay, I'm fine with that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave off the video right here. If anybody has any questions or you want to see something else on the setup, just go ahead and let me know. Um, otherwise, hope everybody enjoys your Labor Day weekend. I'll have another video uh, probably tomorrow or later this weekend. All right. Have a good night. Bye.